Hey, it's Mike here, and today I'm responding to the claim that meat prevents dementia, which was insinuated by Max Lugavere, allegedly a foremost brain expert, according to the Diary of a CEO, the really popular show that he went on. The more um, animal products were consumed, the lower the risk of dementia and Alzheimer's disease by a pretty significant margin. And that interview, which has 1.5 million views, is really just the tip of the iceberg for Max Lugavere, who promotes a low-carb diet with a food pyramid that looks like this, essentially the Atkins diet, thinks that a plant-based diet is one of the top scams of 2023, and puts steak at the top of his list of superfoods. So I'll respond to all of that and more. Let's go. So the description under the episode of Diary of CEO claims that he is a foremost brain expert. Well, let's contrast that to a Wikipedia description of him, which is an American television personality, health and wellness writer, and low carbohydrate diet advocate with a degree in film and psychology. And I'm not a medical doctor. I didn't take an academic route. I didn't, you know, get a PhD, but I had always been passionate about health and nutrition. Max wrote a book on foods and the brain, something I've waited to finish my MPH to even start, and a science writer from McGill reviewed it, saying that he simply seems ill-equipped with those college majors to interpret the scientific literature. But I do have to give Max a little bit of credit here because he isn't afraid to eat vegetables. Yes, the bar is that low. So that's a win at least. Now the video title and the first part of the video is largely about sugar, refined sugar, which we all know is unhealthy. We agree agree there, another point that we agree on, but then it sort of shifts into a conversation about ketogenic diets and low carb diets. And yet, again, from that food pyramid with all the animal products at the bottom, he clearly promotes a low carb diet. So I just have to really quickly remind people that for meta-analysis after meta-analysis, low carb diets are associated with increased mortality by about 30%. And there's not much new that he's doing here that those old low carb diets didn't do. I mean, they promoted a bunch of vegetables and olive oil and stuff like that as well. And from this large BMJ study on COVID, yeah, people who are loosely plant-based had a 73% lower risk of moderate to severe COVID, but those on low carb diets had four times times that risk. And in terms of cognitive function, I wanted to mention this really interesting randomized control trial. No, it was a crossover trial. So it switched diets around and it either gave women a higher saturated fat meal or an essentially identical meal with some sunflower plant-based oil. Oh my God, evil seed oils. What were the results? Yeah, the saturated fat group had worse cognitive performance. We'll get into why in a bit. And we also have this small study which corroborates these findings with really a, a quite damning quote. Quote, results showed that during complete withdrawal of dietary carbohydrate, low carbohydrate dieters performed worse on memory-based tasks than the American Dietetics Association dieters. These impairments were ameliorated or got better after reintroduction of carbohydrates. But I will say his story about why he became interested in this is really interesting to me and hits close to home because the reason that I was pushed toward a plant-based diet in the first place had to do with my grandma having Alzheimer's and me wanting to prevent that. However, in his case, his mom had a Parkinson's related dementia, which he says may have been due to her not eating enough meat. I get passionate about this because my mom was a vegetarian. It's clear that her low meat diet didn't protect her. And I am really sorry about his mom, but I can't help but wonder if he already was into low carb diets and then just saw that as a solution. And I have to mention that Western vegetarian diets especially are high in saturated animal fat, just like meat diets, which both raise LDL or bad cholesterol, which as this study mentions, yes, saturated fat is associated with increased dementia. It also happens to be the same study that looked at Taiwanese vegetarian dementia rates, and I would bet you they're eating less dairy than Western vegetarians. Either way, their dementia rates were 40% lower than their meat eating counterparts, adjusted for exercise and other things. And again, since his mother was diagnosed with a form of Parkinson's, I have to mention the potential Parkinson's dairy connection. But let's get to his main claim, which has to do with more animal products equaling lower dementia risk. Here he is. The UK Biobank study, which is a very large population, 500,000 people. Um, observational study found that uh, a dose response, meaning the more, um, I believe, uh, animal products were consumed, the lower the risk of dementia and Alzheimer's disease by a pretty significant margin. 
Yeah, he's pointing to the UK Biobank study, which is a very large study, you know, 500,000 people. But he happens to ignore the main headline that came from that study, which was that increased processed meat intake was associated with about 44% higher dementia risk. But he isn't pushing processed meat, fine, but also total meat consumption was associated with a higher risk. However, that still does include some processed meat. So what is he pointing to? Yeah, he's pointing to how red meat that is unprocessed was associated with a bit lower incidence. So that's it, red meat prevents dementia. I guess I gotta quit my vegan diet. Well, he even talks about how correlation isn't causation, but in this case, he kind of acts like it is. But more importantly, I just have problems with this study and the conclusions, which brings me to figure one. How did they go from unprocessed red meat having a bit of a trend where more meat equals more dementia and less equals less dementia? And then just as they adjust it, it just completely flips, which is a bit of a red flag. Another example, heck, that zero total meat group went to statistically significantly lower risk of dementia adjusted to a higher risk. This is where a few adjustments made me annoyed as they tend to, first of all, they adjusted for BMI, which from studies like this one, meat is associated with an increased BMI. You know, that has to be adjusted for. Now, perhaps it's the high calorie density of meat causing an increase in calorie storage on the body. I don't know, just a guess. And then we also have them adjusting for previous stroke, which from this study, red meat consumption was associated with increased risk of stroke, so shouldn't have been adjusted for, in my opinion. And for a potential causation beyond correlation there, increased saturated fat consumption raises LDL or bad cholesterol, which is causally linked to atherosclerosis, a Nobel winning finding. That's just two points. Another point from some scientists responding to this study is that it could be reverse causation in the sense that people as they become demented might just increase their processed meat consumption and decrease their unprocessed red meat consumption. This could be just because it's more convenient and possibly for people who are taking care of them in the UK, just giving them whatever is the easiest. In other words, it could be that dementia causes more processed meat consumption and causes less unprocessed meat consumption. You know, I don't think this is a conflict of interest situation. I don't think it was malicious. It's just the researchers weren't looking at the whole picture and they got a result that goes against the trend of data. So is there any other data that we can look at about how healthy red meat is, which he goes on and on about? Well, we see that uh, red meat is not associated um, with the kinds of health problems that, you know, we've been told for decades. Cancer and stuff. And well, we even have this study published from the same data set, and it showed that unprocessed red meat was associated with a whole slew of negative health effects from our leading killer heart disease to pneumonia, multiple digestive diseases, and diabetes. That's a major ouchie. And today's video is sponsored by Seeds DS01 Daily Symbiotic. Symbiotic, of course, is a prebiotic and a probiotic together. And today we're gonna to talk about alcohol, which I think is super interesting to cover. This little guy right here has 53.6 billion active bacterial cell units from 24 different strains, which are scientifically shown to support digestive health, gut barrier integrity, gut immune function, heart health, skin health, and more. But let's talk about alcohol, which as you know, harms the gut. Not only can it lead to SIBO and general dysbiosis, but in 2023 earlier, a really interesting study was published using seed itself. They did a simulated human gut system and they gave it either antibiotics or alcohol, and then they gave it seed to see what would happen. The result of those two bombs was essentially the lowering of short chain fatty acid production, which is super important for gut health and inflammation. But giving seed at the same time as the antibiotics or the alcohol led to an increased level of short chain fatty acids compared to not giving seed. And super interestingly, other native types of beneficial bacteria like F. prosnitsii increased in their amount, even though they weren't even in the seed pill. And of course, I have to mention that Lindy and I have been taking seed since 2021 and have been loving it. And of course, if you would like to try seed, click the link below and use the code Mike at checkout for 25% off your first month's supply. So then what logic does he use to just throw away all the findings like this and all of the previous findings about red meat being bad for you? Well, he says it could be healthy user bias. The person that's eating quinoa on a regular basis, that person's probably a pretty health conscious person. That person probably shops at Whole Foods. That person is probably has a, a gym membership, you know? So that's healthy user bias right there. It works um, in the inverse sort of way with red meat. 
Uh, most people who consume red meat, yeah, they're eating it in the form of hot dogs and hamburgers and, and Subway sandwiches with the fries, with the large Coke. So all that is to say is that it's very easy to find like links. This is ironic because it could be another reason that unprocessed red meat in particular did better than other meats in that study because people who are dodging the processed meats are also probably concerned about healthy lifestyle decisions and that can be associated with other ones like eating more vegetables. And this is why just looking at an association can't be enough to determine causation. We need a lot of other studies and sadly it's really hard to get those with something like Alzheimer's, but we can at least look to the mechanistic data and the actual components of these foods and the effects that they are shown to have for some answers. You know, are vegetables just associated with other habits? No, they have actual components that make them beneficial. For example, they have a huge variety of antioxidants that have positive effects on different parts of the body. They also have fiber, which turns into short chain fatty acids, which lower inflammation and fiber also regulates appetite, which decreases chance of obesity. We have to ask what are the components of meat that have been shown to be negative over the years? years in the data, which he's completely ignoring. Some of the mechanistic reasons for why unprocessed red meat could be unhealthy include heme iron, which oxidizes and is one of the reasons that the WHO deemed it a class 2A carcinogen. Now, something he probably just outright denies because, you know, maybe he has more scientific knowledge than the WHO's team of scientists. And yeah, oxidized heme iron can drive dementia as UCLA summarized a study study using MRI technology, they determined that there was an increase in iron occurring together with tissue damage in the hippocampus in particular of patients with Alzheimer's and that the accumulation of iron in the brain may be influenced by modifying environmental factors such as how much red meat we consume. Then there's carnitine as well as choline in eggs, which he promotes, which both turn into TMAO, which is atherogenic. Then we have NEU5GC, which is inflammatory and could potentially fuel cancer. We have the literal carcinogenic heterocyclic amines that you get from cooking meat, whether it is processed or not. And then one that I think is really interesting is bacterial endotoxins. And that brings me back to that study I mentioned in the beginning on those middle-aged women who seem to have some cognitive issues after eating a high saturated fat meal. Well, they found that was really correlated to the endotoxin levels going up. Yep, put people on a high fat diet, which Max recommends, and people's endotoxin levels double. And it also turns out that in terms of Alzheimer's, these endotoxins can build up in the amyloid plaque, you know, which are a hallmark of Alzheimer's. Recent investigations reported higher abundance of endotoxins in the brains of patients with Alzheimer's disease on autopsy. Endotoxins building up in the memory center of the brain, the region of the brain that develops the earliest and most profound neuropathology in Alzheimer's. And where were the endotoxins concentrated? smack dab in the middle of the amyloid plaques. Then we have saturated fat, which is high in animal products like meat and raises LDL. We just talked about that a second ago. At this point, I want to contrast the views of Max, who again, doesn't have any formal brain related training to a team of neurologists slash medical doctors, the Scherzeis, who you know, are academically active as the Alzheimer's program co-directors at Loma Linda University. You know, what does this duo think about food choices and dementia? Do they think that meat prevents dementia? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and say no. And when you look at different dietary patterns that have been studied in different populations, in observational studies, and even in clinical trials or a case series, whether it's the Mediterranean diet or the MIND diet or the DASH diet or the prudent diet or the plant-based diet, whatever it is, the predominant parts of any dietary pattern that is neuroprotective, that is good for the brain, that prevents dementia, are the plants. It's the greens, the beans, the vegetables, especially the cruciferous vegetables like cauliflower, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, the whole grains, nuts and seeds, and avoiding sources of saturated fats that are found in meat, cheese, and dairy products, and even in coconut oil. And Aisha Shirzai in particular covers LDL on their TikTok, which I recommend following. There's a large body of evidence that shows that when people have high cholesterol during their midlife and have continued exposure to dyslipidemia over their life course, they tend to have higher risk of dementia. It seems 
that oxidized LDL in the blood could influence the conversion of soluble amyloid protein into insoluble amyloid plaques that ultimately damage neuronal systems. And just for another quick response to the idea that a plant-based diet is a scam, we have this study of about 100,000 women showing that, quote, substituting of animal protein with plant protein was associated with a lower risk of all-cause mortality cardiovascular disease mortality and dementia mortality. And of course we do have studies on particular largely plant-based diets like the DASH diet, MIND diet, and Mediterranean diet here, all showing about half the risk of getting dementia with a higher index of those diets, which again, lower meat and throw a bunch of plant-based foods in there. And also I should mention that the blue zones eat very plant-based diets. The trend is less meat and a more variety of whole plant foods. And he actually has a particular reasoning for denying all of the studies showing negative effects of people eating red meat by saying, oh, it's actually really about total diet quality. And we have this study by Maximova and Cancer, which shows this. Yeah, I mean, it's dietary quality as a whole. There was a great study people can look up. Maximova uh, is the first author. They looked at all cause cancer and they found that when people were eating meat on a low quality diet, meaning meat in the context of fast food, right? That yeah, there was an increased risk for cancer. But one, once diet quality was high, meaning that people, people were eating um, meat with fresh fruits and vegetables, clearly a dietary pattern indicative of health consciousness, um, that that risk of cancer was completely abolished. He says if you account for how higher meat intake is associated with other unhealthy dietary choices, you, know, you look at that, then it just shows that red meat is fine. Well, the study itself undermines that a bit because whole grains, which are associated with lower mortality, and of course would be a healthy eating habit, as they go up, high red meat still remains statistically significant for increased cancer that's unprocessed. But is the case that that initial 30 to 45% increased in cancer with high red meat consumption was was attenuated by fruit and vegetable consumption, not just because red meat is totally fine and good for you, but even as the researchers say, the healthy effects that plants are loaded with could help there. For example, heme iron oxidation can be lessened with chlorophyll. But to quote this study directly from the researchers, Quote, consumption of red or processed meat in combination with other foods rich in fiber, antioxidants, phytochemicals, calcium, and other nutrients found in vegetables and fruits, whole grains, and pulses may mitigate the carcinogenic effects of meat consumption, okay? This is like how radiation is buffered by plant antioxidants. That doesn't mean you wanna get more and more radiation and that radiation is healthy. But why does he think that meat is so beneficial? He says it's these nutrients like iron and you know B12, et cetera, that help the brain. But looking to modern day vegans, we see from study after study that B12 deficiency rates are not higher. And also even the Mayo Clinic is getting on board with iron. Quote, there is a misconception that a vegan diet is missing iron. However, vegans are no more likely to develop iron deficiency anemia than the general population. There's also a quote in the beginning where he says that that vegan diets are in studies shown to double the risk of depression. And there have been a number of studies that have shown that particularly vegan diets put people at increased risk for depression, at least a doubling of risk. I mean, food is so powerful, it's medicine. I don't know what study he's talking about, but other previous studies have been done on vegetarian diets in particular, not vegan diets specifically, and a lot of them are funded by the meat industry. However, looking to a more recent study out of Europe, it found that vegans had the lowest level of depression compared to vegetarians and meat eaters, and the meat eaters' depressive symptom score averaged as slightly depressed, so not looking good there. And quick note I found when editing, uh, yeah, he's also, like Joe Rogan, sponsored by Butcher Box. Get that meat money. In in the end, the diet that he promotes is high in animal fat. Well, it does add things like olive oil and promote vegetable consumption. It shies away from things like whole grains. And guess what that describes? The Atkins diet, the same foundation of low carb diets that we see over and over again are associated with increased risk of mortality. And he tries to do all this gymnastics to make red meat look good, but the data in general is showing that meat consumption is bad in terms of dementia and a bunch of other diseases. And we even have studies showing vegetarians having way lower levels of dementia and the 
plant-based diets like the mind diet and the mediterranean diet having lower levels of alzheimer's by like half and a lot of counterpoints can be drawn from other uk biobank studies as well all of those other horrible results with meat consumption you know he understands that we're looking at associations here but then he completely ignores <laughs> all of this massive overwhelming data that red meat and meat in general is harmful and then says oh that's the one time where association is okay the one where meat looked good but looking to you know career neurologists who are you know, academically active like the sure's eyes they say to eat a plant-based diet based off all the data and all of the research so you know check them out and of course if you'd like to try seeds ds01 daily symbiotic then click the link below and use the code mike for checkout and that will give you 25% off your first month's supply. All right, let me know down below what you think about all these claims or if there are any ones that I missed. I know he has a bunch of cholesterol denial stuff I didn't even get into, but that's all I could cover. Feel free to like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.